before the Supreme Court, Cadiz now presents her arguments. According to Cadiz, no? Cadiz contends, among others, that her getting pregnant outside of wedlock is not grossly immoral. <coughs> Especially when both partners do not have any legal impediment to marry. Legal impediment meaning the both, if they wanted to get married, married, they can really get married. No? There is no legal prohibition for them to get married. <coughs> so ordinarily, uh, the context here most likely is that both are single. No? It would be, there would be a legal impediment if one of them or both of them are married. No? So, Kadi surmises that the reason for her suspension was not because of her relationship with her then boyfriend, but because of the resulting pregnancy. Kadi also lambasts Brent's condition of her reinstatement that she gets married to her boyfriend. Saying that this violates the stipulation against marriage under Article 136 of the Labor Code. Kanayabana. Finally, Cadiz contends that there was substantial compliance with the rules of procedure and the CA, the Court of Appeals, should not have dismissed the petition. So according to Cadiz, the technical defects were very minor and that there was substantial compliance uh, for those technical defects. So let's not discuss that here because that is we are not here uh, for the rules of procedure. We are here for the... Uh, labor law doctrines. <clears throat> so what is the position of Brent? Brent meanwhile adopts and reiterates his position before the labor arbiter and the commission that Cadiz's arguments are irrational and out of context. Brent argues, among others, that for Cadiz to limit acts of immorality only to extramarital affairs is to change the norms, beliefs, teachings and practices of Brent as a church institution of the Episcopal Church in the Philippines. This is a very big factor with the position of Brent because it is a hospital and a school owned by a church and the, and the Cadiz, the complainant here, is their human resource personnel. So it makes things very difficult. It would have been difficult if Brent is a Let's say if Brent, the business of Brent is a motel and Cadiz is the janitor, <laughs> getting pregnant out of wedlock is not a problem. But here Brent is a hospital and a school owned by a church and Cadiz is their human resource officer. So that makes things very messy. No? So what is the ruling of the court, the Supreme Court? So ordinarily, the court will simply gloss over the arguments raised by Cadiz, given that the main matter dealt with by the CA were the infirmities found in the petition, which caused the dismissal of her case before it. Uh, in view, however, you know, the Supreme Court wants to uh, resolve this dispute on the merits because of the significance of the issues involved in Cadiz's dismissal, in the dismissal of Cadiz, no? from her employment, and the court will resolve that petition, including the substantial grounds raised by Cadiz. So, suerte, no? Uh, this is a very lucky, Cadiz is very lucky at this point. So, let's skip the part of the decision with respect to the rules of procedure. No? Let's go towards the immorality, the concept of immorality as a just cause for termination of employment. Is immorality a just cause for termination of employment? And in, the, in this case, maybe, is there really immorality? Is there just cause? Can Cadiz be terminated from her employment because she got pregnant outside of wedlock, considering that her employer is a school and a hospital owned by a church and her work is a human resource officer? So those are the factual circumstances which are important no? that you must consider assuming that you are the one writing the decision of this case those things would be points that you have to consider so let's proceed with the supreme court decision in the next video i'll share more okay so i'll see you in the next video